Let's now try to think of a possible mechanism for the reaction of aldehydes and ketones with sodium borohydride in order to give the corresponding alcohols. So let's draw a general structure for um, ketones, so something like, like that. And we have seen before that aldehydes and ketones react with sodium borohydride in order to give the corresponding alcohol. So we have the borohydride ion. This is the borohydride ion. BH4 minus. What's going to happen next is that the hydride ion will attack the, carb the carbonyl compound, the ketone in this case, but it's not uh, quite hydride. It's actually hydrogen transfer. In other words, it's this hydrogen that gets transferred with two electrons between boron and hydrogen. We can show this using an arrow like that, for example. And we look carefully at where that or arrow originates. It's actually from the middle of that hydrogen boron bone, indicative of movement of two electrons. If you like hydrogen with the two electrons, then that attack takes place on carbon of the ketone or, ald or the aldehyde. It's therefore called hydrogen transfer. It is also nucleophilic addition because the nucleophile, in this case, the hydride ion attacks um, carbon of a carbonyl group. This carbon oxygen double bond simultaneously break, releasing electrons to, to oxygen. So we can now write the intermediate alkoxide And you can see now the bond, the new bond between hydrogen, that one between hydrogen and, and carbon. So we have this intermediate alkoxide plus what's left of the borohydride, which is BH3. So we have BH3 in addition to the alkoxide uh, nucleophilic addition uh, product. So What's going to happen next is that this oxygen now will react with boron. That's why, that's because oxygen is actually Lewis basic. Boron, as you know, is Lewis acidic. Boron is Lewis acidic because it has an empty p orbital. It has a vacant p orbital, therefore it behaves as a Lewis acid. In other words, it can react with Lewis, with Lewis bases. We can show this reaction with an arrow like that. So we indicate movement of two electrons from the lowest basic oxygen to the lowest acidic um, boron. So what we get next is this intermediate where boron has a negative charge. The reaction will not stop here, actually. Now, this intermediate will react with another molecule of the same carbonyl compound, in this case, the ketone. So we can draw the ketone here. And that's because the, the borohydride has four hydride ions, has four, four moles, if you like, of the hydride. Therefore, theoretically, each BH4- minus can react with four molecules or four moles of the of the ketone following stoichiometry so therefore that intermediate will react with another mole of the ketone another hydride transfer um, uh, takes place so something like like this and of course the carbon oxygen bond breaks um, up simultaneously so what we can do now is we write the the resultant product, so something like, like this. We, if you notice, we, we have written the, uh, this intermediate straight away. We did not go through the alkoxide because that's understood. Now, if you notice here, two reductions have actually take, taken place. Two hydride uh, transfer, or two hydride and nucleophilic attacks have taken place. Now, this intermediate can further react 
with two moles of the ketones in two consecutive nucleophilic addition reactions on the same ketone, which indicates that each BH4 minus can react with four moles of the of the ketone. In other words, one mole of sodium borohydride can reduce four moles of the ketone. Now, in the next protonation step, such intermediate or after the reaction with two moles, with further two moles of the ketone, we get the final um, alcohol product, so something like that. And there should be four of them, assuming that these hydrides now react with additional two moles of the, of the ketone. So the, in the final protonation step with the hydronium ion, each oxygen boron bond gets broken up. In other words, the oxygen gets protonated to form the final alcohol product.